Well, you guys, I am Sheila Albritton, Director of Career Services and Counseling, and I'll tell you a little bit briefly about my, de my whole department because we cover a lot of territory. If students don't know what they want to do when they come to Chattanooga State, they come to my office for career planning. Um, also, if they have things that happen throughout the, the course of their school, we have the counseling department, um, great counselors that can help with those types of issues, and then career counseling, which is what we're going to cover today. And when you guys are ready to get jobs, you're going to want to be very connected to my department because we actually send resumes out to the companies. Companies contact us and let us know they have jobs. We connect the two, and hopefully you get your job. So you definitely want to know about my department and use it from this point forward, okay? Some of you may already be using it. But what we're going to cover right now is resume writing. I'm going to go fairly quickly. Um, I'll try to make sure that I cover everything so that you won't have questions, but if you do, please just pass those forward. Uh, I've put this presentation up on the board. It's actually a libguide off of the career service website. And right over here, I've, I've told you exactly how to get to the, very quickly, one step to the career service website. But off of the front of Chattanooga State's website, when you go to student support, under student support, you'll see careers. And that's where you can also um, contact these resources. All right, resumes, why do we need one? What is a resume? Anybody? It's your, it's your sales brochure. It is your sales brochure. It is to get you the interview, not the job. That's the way I want you to think about it. It's, it's your sales brochure. You're presenting it to a company. It needs to pass the 30, 45 second rule because literally my background is human resources and I have looked and studied many, many resumes. We grab them up, we look at them very quickly and we'll stick it in a yes, a no, and a maybe pile. Well, you always want to be in that yes pile. Keep your resume simple. Keep it simple, keep it to one page if at all possible. As you kind of grow in your, your um, maturity and experience, that sort of thing, your resume is going to grow with you. It changes all the time. The resume that you create now will not be the resume that you end up with. Because as, as your experience changes, as you take additional courses, it all changes. So you're going to want it to where you can get to it very quickly. You can grab it up very quickly. I can tell you that, that one time, and, and this is coming from me, I know how to do resumes and I've known how to do them a long time. But I needed my resume very quickly. And I, myself, had taken it to a professional to get it all fixed up, looking nice. When I went to get it a few years later, I called the company. Nobody answered. I got in my car and I drove to Hicks and Pike to see maybe they just weren't answering the phone because they were so busy. They were gone. And they were gone with my resume. So I caution you. I want you to learn to write these resumes and I want them at your fingertips so you can get to them anytime so that if somebody needs it tomorrow, you've got it and it's always updated, okay? So that's why we're covering this today so that you can, you can prepare your own resume. Um, there are several resources that I have put out there. I'm a very visual person, and it is always better for me to see some. If I can see it, I can do it. If I have to read how to do it, forget it. It's not going to happen, but if I can see it, I can do it. So I have put a lot of resources on my website so that you can do the same thing. You can take a look at it, decide what works for you, what doesn't work for you, and there you go. You, you're, you're building your resume. Now, for some of you, you've never, even, you've never even started a resume, right? Is there anybody in here that does not have one? Great, great. If you have somebody that you know, maybe a friend that is wanting to develop a resume, that resume worksheet is a great way to start. It pulls all your information together. It's just a tool. These are just tools for you to use if you've never started, and you can get all the information you're going to need to develop your resume 
in one spot. And quite frankly, it's a real good thing to take with you in addition to your resume. If you're going to apply for a job like on the spot, have that stuff with you so you can refer back to it. And you'll have all your information in one location. If you haven't started already, I encourage you all to have some type of folder that you keep all your job search information in. So you can always get back to it. I have a folder, now it's about this thick, it's about an inch thick, but I have the very first resume I ever wrote all the way up to now. And I encourage you to keep that because there might be an interview that you go on that you wanna to refer to some things that you did in your past. And maybe it's not on your resume. But it's a good thing to refresh your memory of everything you've done all the way back, okay? So, again, we're going to pass the 30 to 45 second rule on your resume. Resumes are not difficult. Everybody, everybody kind of thinks, oh, you know, I've got to do a resume. This is probably one of the easier things you're going to do because it's all about you. You don't have to do anything. It's all about you. You've got the information. You've just got to get it in a format that becomes a sales brochure for you. All right, there's basic information that has to be on every resume. Your name, address, telephone number, and your email address. No funny stuff, you guys. If you have a crazy email address, you need to change it. It's, it's time to go with your name, dot name, gmail.com or whatever, but no hot dog 56, you know, cute girl, whatever. It's time to, you're a professional now, it's time for you to show that in your resume as well. All right. Everybody knows that information, that's, that's yours. Now an objective. Every resume, not every resume, but the ones that you're gonna wanna do, you're gonna wanna put an objective. The purpose of the objective is so that the place that you're applying for the job, they know what you're actually interested in. Because I might be Memorial Hospital, and I'm actually the HR department, and I'm taking resumes for the custodial service. I'm taking resumes for nurses. I'm taking resumes for health information management technicians. You see what I'm saying? I need to know what you're applying for so I know what category to put you in. An objective is very, very simple. And again, I give you some sample objectives, a whole list of them. When you're dealing with my resources up here, you guys, there's, there's really no such thing as plagiarism in a resume because you plagiarize a resume, then obviously it's somebody else's resume, right? So you're just gonna take these tools and make them your own. All right, you can, the verbiage, whatever you need to use, it's totally available to you. And you just use it all the time if you want to. The objective then follows, um, behind your objective will be your education. Now starting with your education, you're in school today, but some of you may have gone to a school before. Any of you? Right, all right. You're gonna do reverse chronological order in your education. Your education and your experience, but we'll get to your experience in just a second. All right, you're gonna start with today, where you are today, and work backwards. Pretty simple. Now when you're listing your education, do not abbreviate Chattanooga State Community College Somebody did us a favor on taking, when they took the technical, it fits a lot easier on one. When they took technical out, it fits better on a line. So Chattanooga is still long, but you must spell it out, okay? I want you to also make sure you list the degree that is granted or the one that you're seeking. When you list the school's name, if the, the city is listed in the name, like Chattanooga State Community College, Chattanooga, Chattanooga is listed in there, so you don't have to list where that is. But if it were not, then you're gonna wanna list the city and state. Pretty clear? Um, include your major. 
Again, don't abbreviate. Don't assume people know what you're talking about in a resume. We use acronyms all the time here. Don't assume somebody knows what it means. You know, as, as many years as I've been in HR, I got my dad to look at my resume and it had HR all through my resume. And he said, well, you know, it's really pretty and it looks really nice, but what in the world is HR? Like, wow. I mean, that was a real good lesson for me. You got to spell it out, okay? Um, list your date of graduation or your anticipated graduation. Make sure you list that on your resume. Only include your GPA if it's great, like a 3.5 or better. Otherwise, just leave it off. Then you're going to go to the next college. You're going to do the same thing. You're going to list all that information once again. Now, time for your experience. How far do you think you ought to go back with your experience? Average is 10 years. Now, that really can depend. If the last 10 years have been 10 different jobs that are part-time jobs that don't really mean anything and don't really apply to what you're doing right now, then you may not want to, you, you may want to go back and actually catch, capture some meaningful employment. But one thing that I want to, to tell you, because just in this room alone, we've got all ages. Some have been in the workforce for a long time, some have not. Those of you that have, you, you may want to do a functional resume where you're focusing on your skills and your experience without the chronological time frame so that somebody doesn't go, okay, this person is this age, all right? It's called a functional resume. Those of you that have maybe less experience, you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of experience in the workplace at all, I want you to draw back on your transferable skills. Now, transferable skills, that is a skill you can take anywhere. It's good anywhere you go. And hopefully, even in class, you're getting skills that are transferable. Your teamwork, your um, computer skills, your ability to work alone or to um, develop processes, anything like that, those are transferable skills, skills that you take anywhere. Now you can get transferable skills anywhere you work. You know, not just in your field right now. It's going to be very important that you can complete tasks. It's going to be very important that you can work together on projects. But it's going to be just as important that you can work alone that you can start on your own, that you don't have to have somebody looking over you. So those are the types of things you would want to focus on if you're young and don't have a lot of experience towards this field. All right, is that pretty clear what I mean by that? Now, when you're looking at your resume, it needs to be pleasing to your eye. When you look at it, it needs to be very easy to follow, very simple to read. If I have to go digging around in a resume, if I have to go digging around to find out when did you actually work there, you know, what did you actually do, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it. That goes back to those first few seconds that somebody looks at your resume. Keep it in the same order as you're listing as you're listing the place of employment, city and the state, you're gonna list your, your job title. Then I want you to list some duties that pertain to that job that are also going to be something that they might want to see in the job that you're applying for. Now one key thing to think about when you are looking or developing your resume, it's not a bad idea to develop this resume for each job you're applying for. Now that sounds like a lot of work, but it isn't. You're gonna take that job description and immediately you're gonna see keywords in their job description. Maybe they call the same thing, they use a different word than you typically use. Use their word. 
in your resume. That will also help if they, if they scan your resumes in. That will also help with the keywords if they put it, because when people, everything's going electronic, and you upload your resume, they're going to go with keywords in your resume, so you want your keywords to match their keywords. It seems obvious, but take the time to do that. All right, literally have your resume right beside the job description to make sure you're matching keywords. So you may have one basic framework for your resume, but every time you apply for a job, you may want to update a few things. That goes for your objective as well. They may call the position different titles at two different companies. So you'd want to change that in your objective. All right? Now, other things that you can list on your resume, honors and awards that you've gotten. You're going to want to list the honors and awards, though, that, that would be of some benefit, some of, uh, importance to your career objectives. You know what I'm saying with that? You know, you want them to somehow relate. Same with professional affiliations and activities that maybe you're doing in the community. You may want to list your volunteer work. You may want to list um, co-ops and internships that you, you have or that you might get. Um, do them in rank order of importance, okay? Most important to your career objective, list it first. It's, it's, there's no easy way to say that I'm a member of su such and such, but try to focus on your leadership roles within whatever organization you're in. If you're not in a leadership role, I challenge you to, to make yourself available for that. Start challenging yourself and, and putting yourself, because these days networking is key to gaining a job. Some, you know the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know? Well, networking gets a lot of jobs. These organizations that are related to your field or, or something that can show some leadership skills, there are people, other people in that organization, and when they see what you're capable of, they're going to want you at their place of employment as well. All right? So be thinking that way now while you're, you're finishing up and you're, you're in school, be thinking about that now. Also, relevant coursework might be applicable for a resume. Um, you know, especially, there might be a specific class that a company is going to want to know if you have that class. Don't make them hunt for it. Just go ahead and present it in your resume. That way, oh, you know, I'm looking for somebody with that's taken medical terminology. You know, I want that person. Go ahead and put it out there. Also, don't underestimate your computer skills. You know, you have a lot better, you're a lot savvier with your computer skills than I was when I was coming through school. You know, I go back to where we actually used cards, punch cards that we stuck in. It was all computer programming. It was it was horrible. Do I look like a computer programmer? No. So your computer skills are far better than what you even realize. You may be very proficient in PowerPoint. You may be proficient in Word or Excel. List that on your resume. Because guess who's hiring? Guess what age they are? They're probably my age or a little older even. So somebody that's very good with computers? That might be really tempting for me, okay? So list that. Your licenses and certifications. Um, anything that you feel relevant that you want somebody to know, remember it's your sales brochure. List it on your resume. Now, there are some major don'ts on a resume, okay? First of all, I'm going to encourage you to not use templates. Templates are the devil. When you are trying to upload resumes, when you're trying to use on all the online, you know, most companies have an online presence now and you have to upload your resume into them. Templates, they don't like them. 
They're very, very difficult, and they're quite frankly going to be very difficult for you to manipulate. It seems real easy, you know, at first to, to use a template, but if you can't really use it in the real world, then, then I just don't encourage you to do that. What I do encourage you is look at the templates, find a style you like, and then just copy it, I mean, use it in Word. Just type up your resume in Word, and there you have it. Now, there are a lot of resources there, but I also want to show you on the website, just a little bit further back on my career website, are these job choice magazines. They are loaded with examples of cover letters, resumes, tips on interviewing, you name it, they're in these magazines and you literally just flip through them online like they're sitting in your lap, all right? These are on the career website for Chattanooga State. Now, the last one, that calculator, that salary calculator, you can literally put in what city, what job, and it'll give you an, how much experience you have and it'll give you an idea of what you can possibly expect in the salary range. All right? Do not make grammatical errors on your resume. This is one time you want to make sure it's spelled right. Do not use pronouns like I or my. Stay away from that. Um, leave off personal information like your age, your gender, how many children you have, your marital status. It is not appropriate to be on a resume. I literally had one resume come through my office and the lady um, said that she was a widow with five children on her resume. Now, can you imagine getting the resume because you would faint? You would go, oh my goodness, she will never be at work. She will be home with one of those kids all the time. That's, that's why we don't put it on there. It's none of their business, quite frankly. You know, you're professionals now. You're going to be at work when you're supposed to be at work. That's all that matters. Don't abbreviate, and don't mention salary on your resume, salaries that you've made in the past. Now, things that you want to make sure you do, it's good to leave about an inch margin around your resume. Use a 10 to a 12 font. Do not use crazy characters for bullets literally just use a dot bullet. Um, again, computerized systems that accept your resumes, they don't like anything that's funny. So straight up bullets, um, really on a computerized, when you're gonna submit your, your resume through the computer, I recommend that you save it as a PDF and submit it that way, that way nothing shifts. Keep it to one page if, if possible, and let me just tell you, you need to proofread it, you need to have your friend proofread it, and you need to give it to that one person that's very, very critical that will say, that'll really read it and look for misspellings and look for information that isn't easily understood. You all have one of those people in your life. Have them proofread your resume. Now, we also have a service here at the college. It's called Working Wednesdays. Every Wednesday from 9.30 to 11.30, you can bring your resume over to the Career Service Office for our resume doc to take a look at. She'll mark it up real quick, give it right back to you with the change this, changes that need to be made. I encourage you to use her. You can also email your resume to her. All this information is on the career website. Her email address and how to get your resume to her. She usually has a turnaround time that's pretty doggone quick, like a day. I mean, she'll return it pretty quickly. So use my office. We're free to you, okay? And, and nobody wants you to get a job more than this college. So we give you a lot of tools, but they're no good if you don't use them, okay? So send your resume over, she'll take a look at it. Now, everybody in here, you were here last fall, right? You're all in e-recruiting. You may not even realize you're all in e-recruiting, but you are. E-recruiting is the system that I send your resumes out to companies. Companies let us know the jobs. We do it electronically. 
e-recruiting. You can get to it from the front page of my website. You're all in it. You all have a username and you all have a password. And we can get you that information so that you'll know what it is and you need to start using that immediately. You need to complete your profile and you need to upload your resume so that it's in the system. Now when you upload your resume, it will go in front of the resume doc. She has to approve it. Keep in mind, we're on the same team. We want you to get a job. So we are going to be most critical. Most critical. You want us to be. You don't want us to let things slide by that might keep you from getting a job. So we approve it. If it's approved, then you're in the system. You'll start getting the weekly job board that we send out. You'll start getting information about workshops that we have, all the different functions. We have career fairs coming up. Um, health career fair will be March the 7th in this building in the lobby. Um, we have a lot of events for students that you guys need to take advantage. And quite frankly, everybody in here needs to get that resume done prior to March 7th for that career fair. Because when you go to a career fair, you want to hand your resume off to these different companies. All right, you want to have them handy and lots of them so that you can hand them to these different companies that might be interested in you or you might be interested in. Okay, any questions? I'm just gonna refer back to the questions you've already sent, but are there any questions that I have not covered that you'd like to know something about? I know one, I know one, buzzwords. Or we talked about matching the words in your resume to the job description, but also on, on, this, um, on our resources, I list over here Action words, it's a list of action words that are great on a resume, and also attributes, quality attributes. A huge list of words that are great to use on a resume. Again, I'm very visual, so I've gotta have something in front of me, and boy, when you look at that, it's, your resume just pops. It gives you really good professional words to use on, on your resume. Now. Again, I want to stress with your education and your experience, it's chronological. You list the last first and work backwards, okay? They always want to know what you're doing or what you've just done. Um, so keep that in mind. Again, there are sample resumes if you need to look at them. Should you submit reference letters and that sort of thing with your resume? You can, but if they ask, and this is one thing that I was always very funny about, if I asked for a resume and a cover letter, I wanted a resume and a cover letter. You see what I'm, you see what I'm getting at? I didn't want a stack of other things from other companies. You can always take that to the interview with you and say, would you like to see and have them ready Never give them your original copy, but have copies of them for them to see in the interview process. Now, if they ask for letters of reference, if they ask for um, something from a previous employer, yes, then absolutely submit it. But start following directions exactly in this process, okay? Because if I ask for a resume only, and I start receiving all kinds of things, well, that to me says you didn't follow my directions. I only wanted a resume. So listen, read very carefully what they're asking for, and then present that information. There are sample cover letters, both in those magazines and on this LibGuide for you. Um, you've got, you can call our office. Any information that you need regarding any of this, you can always call the office. All right, and we'll get it back to you and make sure you understand clearly what to do. Okay, other questions? The question was, she works at a place that goes by two different names, but she worked at this one, she worked at this one. Now, how does she list that? Because it was all the same company. There are ways that, to do that, and we can show you precisely how to do that so that you're listing them under the main title, and then you're indenting a little bit and listing the two so it shows that it's the same company, two different branches. 
Okay. All right. Well, I hope I've answered your questions today. And again, we are always available to you. Um, we are an email away. Contact us. Let us know if you have any questions or any concerns about any of this, and we'll be glad to assist you in the whole process. I'm going to go right here. We're at the home site of Chattanooga State. Student support. You see careers? Click on that, and that takes you directly to my website. Then under job search, job search resources, <clears throat> takes you directly to that LibGuide. All right. All this is available to you. It's at your fingertips. Use it. Now, back to our website. Let me just point out a couple of things. E-recruiting, right there is your access to e-recruiting. I've already set your accounts up. I'll make sure you know your usernames and passwords. Um, under, trying to think if there's anything else, networking tips. But most of that information is on that LibGuide. That LibGuide is good for resume writing and it's good for interview skills. I'm currently getting emails from, I think you guys. It's from okay. e-recruiting. You can click on some of them and it lists a whole bunch of different ones. We send out a job board once a week. And those are jobs that are coming into Chattanooga State. You can go outside of Chattanooga State and look at other jobs as well. Is that the only jobs that you guys have, that have come in? You list all the jobs? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. um, let me show you this cool tool. This is through the library, Career Transitions. Um, they have this on their website. You go to the Chattanooga State Library website and go, go find Career Transitions. This thing is incredible. Again, it's an, a lot of tools about writing resumes, cover letters. But in addition to this, you can actually connect to jobs. You can actually connect directly to jobs. Now, on our LibGuide, that whole middle section that, that I presented to you, those are also connections to jobs. One of my favorites, Indeed. I don't know if any of you have ever used it, but I love it. This has something very similar to Indeed. Um, I am in the process of looking over this so that I can better explain this, guys, this to you guys. But Definitely under the library. It's a great website. I've played in it just a little bit. Dig right into it. All these resources are available to you.